the election less than a month away, I wanted to talk about something that hasn't gotten a lot of attention. There's gonna be five constitutional amendments on the ballot for you guys to vote on this November. And I wanted to talk about a couple of them uh, here today, if only because I've been thinking about them a lot in the last couple weeks. And so I thought it would be good to sort of share them. So the first one is actually number two on the list. Uh, and it says, shall the state be authorized to issue special purpose revenue bonds and use the proceeds from the bonds to assist agricultural enterprises on any type of land rather than only important agricultural land? It's an, it's an important distinction between any type of land and important agricultural land. Uh, important agricultural land is a special distinction by the state, which basically means you can't do anything else on that land except agriculture. So the supporters of this Conam say that uh, it will help small farmers produce crops, produce food. The majority of the supporters of this Conam are supportive of local agriculture, supportive of not just the seed crops and the, and the big agribusiness folks, but those people who are actually growing food for us to eat and we need to be doing more of that. On the other side of that coin are those people who say, this is bad, we don't need it, it's gonna cause a mess and people will abuse it. There's a good blog post uh, today or yesterday from Senator Laura Thielen. Basically what she says is a law passed or, or a constitutional amendment passed in the last several years. It basically allows landowners to, to voluntarily change the designation of their land from whatever it is to important agricultural land. And so, the point that she raises in her blog is we don't need this CONAM because there's already a mechanism by which people can get access to special purpose revenue bonds by simply changing the designation of the land that, that they're using. I think that's a good point, and if it's actually the case, then I'd be curious to hear what the supporters of the CONAM say and why it's necessary. On that one, I'm I'm on the fence. I haven't decided whether I support it or don't support it. I think it's it's worthy of more discussion and I encourage people to check it out. So the other one is question number four on the ballot. What it says is shall the appropriation of public funds be permitted for the support or benefit of private early childhood education programs that shall not discriminate on the basis of race, religion, sex, or ancestry as provided by law. So this is the one that basically is trying to create a preschool program statewide. And so the governor and the legislature have created the foundations or the framework for a program that allows the state to work with private providers for early childhood education. And so this kind would basically say that the state can give money to these private providers to provide the, the preschool. So the opponents of the Conam say, look, we don't want private providers doing this. So the state should do it, the state should take it on, the Department of Education should make it part of their mandate. The other part of that is right now a lot of the private preschool providers are religiously affiliated. People don't like the idea of public tax dollars, public money going to pay for religious institutions, and that's a legitimate concern. Um, the supporters say, look, we need this program study upon study upon study says kids who go to preschool and have a preschool education do better throughout the course of their educational career than those kids who don't. And so we need a program. Right now there's nothing. And if we wait for the state to do it, A, it's going to cost just a lot of money. And I don't know what the figures are, but it would be a lot of money, which the state simply doesn't have. I'm supporting this particular condom, and after a lot of thought and, 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 and talking to people, this is what I came up with. It reminds me of the saying, the perfect is the enemy of the good. In this case, in a perfect world, the state had a plethora of money to throw at early childhood education, and cost wasn't a matter, and we could find the space, build the schools, then I would say yes, absolutely, let the DOE do it, the state should do it, it should be free for everyone, no problem. The problem is we don't live in that world, we live in the real world, where the state doesn't have the resources to do it, and the only way that it would, would be to raise taxes. We can't do that, it would take millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to create an entirely DOE structured program for childhood education. Whereas it will still cost a lot of money to do it with private providers, but it won't cost nearly as much. And it can get done a lot faster. The infrastructure with the private providers already exists. They're already doing it. All we're gonna do 
is give them more resources so that they can bring in more kids, so that there are more private providers that can do this, and there will be some DOE schools that will have preschool classrooms, just not enough for everybody. I encourage you to support this, talk to people about it. I think it's an important issue. We need to do better by our kids. That's really the bottom line, and we can't wait for this perfect scenario where we have lots of money and lots of resources to do it because it's just it's not going to happen the legislature is not going to provide that kind of money and voters d aren't going to want to raise their taxes whether it's for education or anything else they don't like it so i think we need to get real and get on board with this before it's too late and that's how i feel there are three other constitutional amendments on the ballot in november check them out read up learn about them vote either vote yes or vote no but you should vote on them. They're important. In the coming days and weeks, I will talk more about other election-related stuff. Right now, I think we're something like 22 days away, so we're, we're getting really close, and people need to start thinking about how they're going to vote. So for now, again, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.